What up, everyone? Pat Mayo here with some breaking news. The PGA Championship DraftKings salaries have been released. It's early, and maybe we'll see some great value, because I haven't looked at them yet. So I'm going to scroll through everything that's going on to try to find where the initial values we might even try to make our play the good plays lineup uh, this early in a week, more than a week out from the actual tournament starting, and see how that jives with everything that's going to happen over the course of the next week, because I got a ton of content coming at you. Smash the like button, by the way, and in the comment section, give me your early lean for the PGA Championship at Kiowa Island starting next Thursday. We'll have a giant Listener's League link as well. I don't actually have the link for it as of yet, but as soon as I do, I will dump it into the comment section of this video and this podcast, so check back to make sure you're one of the first people to get in said contest, because for the Masters, it filled with about three days to go. So you're going to want to reserve your three spots early, $15 to play, three max entry, no rake, making it better than the Millionaire Maker to invest your money in, because it actually has fat, flat payouts, and there's not 500,000 people in it, so you might actually be able to win this particular event. The Pat Mayo Experience Open, the best tournament on DraftKings every single year. So Saturday, I think I will have the DraftKings breakdown show with Ben Raza, the research show on Sunday. Monday, bets with Feinberg. Tuesday, Rick and I will go player by player and do two minutes on each player in case you're wondering about them. Then we'll have more updated ownership and really be able to hammer down on what we're thinking about that. Then the live chat will return on Wednesday. So there's a ton of content coming out for the PGA Championship. And if you could retweet, you could share, do whatever, leave the ratings and reviews, always hit the likes, tell some friends about it who might even give a shit about golf, but, you know, we'll log into things and hit like buttons. That will go a long way to help us continue our giant coverage of every golf major and just golf every single week. So without further ado, because I know I've been babbling on like an idiot, and use fantasynational.com slash mayo to get 20% off over there. You do it uh, on Wednesday or Thursday, you'll get the entire week, you get 20% off, and boom, you'll be able to build your lineups. As you can watch me do the walkthrough on the research show, you'll see how I build mine, you'll be like, that's stupid, I'm going to build it a different way and actually make it work for once. But you can do that when you're a member at fantasynational.com slash mayo. So I'm looking at it right now. Rory is the most expensive player. So he and Justin Thomas are the only two above 11,000. DJ, Rom, Bryson, Spieth, Colin, no, not even Morikawa. Morikawa is the defending champ, is 9-8. So DJ is listed as out right now. So, so is Webb Simpson on the DraftKings site because they withdrew from their previous tournaments. They're both expected to play. It's one thing with Dustin Johnson with him withdrawing from the Byron Nelson because of this knee injury. It doesn't seem like it's too concerning, despite there being murmurings about him missing the PGA Championship. It's in his home state. He's going to play. Dude was doing backflips off a yacht this weekend. So I think he's probably going to be fine. Unless he hurt himself doing the backflips. That would be stupid. Uh, Either way, I like Dustin for this event, and we'll see what happens to his odds. It's actually the best thing to happen. Actually, it was the combination of both Rory winning and Dustin pulling out because of injury. So he was at 10 to 1. He fell to 12 to 1. He might be able to snag a 16 to 1 somewhere if people are truly out on Dustin Johnson. I'll talk myself out of him by the time that everything comes along. But everyone is fairly priced at the top. You don't see any real outliers. Bryson at 10-2 is kind of enticing, considering he's rarely that low. In the nines, you got Morikawa, Xander, Brooks, Hideki, Victor Hovland, Webb, Reed, and Cantlay. Cantlay has missed like four cuts in a row, so obviously he's going to win the moment that I jump off and be like, oh, he's great value. I'll continue betting him. Oh, he missed the cut. Great. Thank- thanks, Pat. Thanks for showing up. But, well, I mean, that's... No one seems out of the ordinary there. I guess if Brooks shows up at the Byron Nelson and then all of a sudden he's fine and he's like top three or he wins or he's top five or just looks really good, gains, you know, 12 strokes tee to green, loses five putting, like no big deal there. He could turn out to be a tremendous value at this venue. Looking back at the leaderboard last time, and again, I'll have way more information on this once I actually do the full amount of research. I just want to react to these in real time right now, is that it's very Euro-centric top of the leaderboard. You had Blake Adams, Keegan Bradley, 
and Steve Stricker as the only three Americans who finished inside the top 10 in 2012 with the last time that this was held at Kiowa Island, the PGA Championship. So that doesn't really tell me much uh, in terms of those three players in particular, not necessarily all the similar types of players. Keegan and Stricker couldn't have less in common. They both finished inside the top 10. And then it's like Poulter and... Now, obviously, Rory won. David Lynn is up there. It's just like, what is going on? Uh, so maybe there's something about this. It is on the coast, so maybe there is a coastal element. It's a really long course, which was I, I was kind of surprised to see someone like Poulter up there and Stricker up there. It's going to play over 7,800 yards. And if the wind does pick up, like it is going to be extremely difficult. But maybe, I guess, I mean, Rory just played unconscious. He lapped the field in 2012. But... Maybe it's to do with where it is so long that scrambling is going to be so important uh, unless you are just immaculately striking the ball so, so well or scoring on the par threes or something like that. I saw Robert Garrigus basically gained more strokes than everyone on the field um, on in terms of the par fives that year. Like, why is Robert Garrigus popping up here? And I had to go investigate, and that's what it ended up showing me. So par five scoring has got to be key. But if you can scramble, that is going to go a long way. So someone like Spieth is super live at a tournament like this. I, I wouldn't just say, oh, this is a long course. Obviously, driving distance is going to be the most important thing. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I do want to run some more numbers, do some more research into everything, but that's not my initial lean looking at how this leaderboard played itself out the last time that we saw it here. It is a Pete Dye course, so it's going to fuck with people's minds anyway. Uh, any good values going down the list? Cam Smith is 8900 bucks. That's more than Zalatoris. Berger is a really good value here. So if he has a great Byron Nelson, he's going to be off the charts owned here. $8,700. Finau is eighty six. Scheffler, Fitzpatrick, Sungjae, Tommy Fleetwood, and Justin Rose both seem overvalued at 82 and 81. Hatton, uh, who's a better player than both those guys, is only $8,000. So is Louie. Then you have this tier of like Scott, Answer, Lowry. Lowry could be really interesting at a course like this, I think. Uh, he's played some of the longer courses really well, some of the harder courses really well, and he's a really good scrambler, so I wouldn't overlook Shane Lowry. I doubt that he's going to have much you know, buzz behind his name, but he's someone whose overall game can kind of tackle a course that gets a little bit trickier. Yeah, Casey Day, I mean, Casey's going to be uber chalk again, 7700 bucks. Yep, sign everyone up. Corey Connors actually got a boost here. He's $7,600 for the first time in ages. Oh, Higo. Uh, I mean, I don't know if people are going to use Higo. $7,400? He's 80 to 1 in the betting market? I love myself some Garrick Higo, but that seems pretty extreme for a guy uh, who has not quite competed at this level and shown any sort of success. It's one thing to go dummy people on the fucking Canary Islands. It's a different when you suit it up at a major championship and you're priced more than, let's see here, than Max Homa or Matthew Wolf or Charlie Hoffman. I really like Matt Wallace. I bet Matt Wallace, by the way, 110 to 1 to win the PGA Championship along with the top five each way. It was a half bet, so I want to see if I can get the eight placings later on during the week. I think that he is a I don't know if he's going to be able to hold up. Just looking at his results, T to Green, he's been really good over the course uh, of the past three months or so. And I know he can scramble. I've seen him play really well at a long, hard course at a PGA Championship at Bethpage Black the year that Brooks and Dustin both played really well. Matt Wallace was up inside the top 10 that year. So I think that he can most definitely compete here. And he kind of hits the Euro angle that I wanted to see out of it too. Anyone else down here? See, woo, Kim, $7,200. Billy Ho is only $7,200 as well. Not sure what to make of him at this point in time, but see, woo, I think is definitely going to be chalky here at $7,200. Maybe it'll depend. If he has a disastrous Byron Nelson, everyone's going to jump off shit, but it doesn't. It shouldn't really matter what he does at Byron Nelson. This is a Pete Dye course. It's Si Woo Kim. Play Si Woo Kim at Pete Dye courses. And even if he doesn't play all that well at Byron Nelson, he comes in with really good form. So I see no reason to go a different way. Coke Rack at 71 is a really nice price. Bobby Mack at 7000 is a really nice price. I think that is the only PGA Championship future that I actually have. I have Robert McIntyre. I think it's 175 to 1 to win this event from back in January. Uh, he is, what is he now, like 125 to 1? So no big deal there. But uh, he kind of bombs it out there. Another Euro angle type guy. I think if there's ever going to be a breakthrough for him in a major championship early on, he played really well at the Masters, earned his exemption next year by coming inside the top 12. I think he can handle this. Uh, just make some, make some putts, Bobby Mack, and we'll be good to go. Cam Davis, likely to be popular at 69. Thomas Peters, if Thomas Peters has a good week at Byron Nelson, he's only $6,800. 
for the PGA Championship, he is going to be like 40% owned if he comes inside the top five. That's just going to be the guy that everyone looks at. Uh, Malinari is down at 68. Any big names really stick out? Sam Horsfield is coming over. Uh, he missed the cut at Valspar on the number, I believe. But he's $6,700. That's not a terrible price point for him. Rosner is way below most of the other Europeans. Like he's behind Detri and Kitayama, who are both 6,600. Rosner is also $6,600. Another one who we'll get to see in action at the Byron Nelson. Who else from down here? Okay, so here's a couple guys that I think that could make some noise here. Someone like Brennan Steele. Just if Keegan Bradley can play well enough to pop up on leaderboards uh, at this course in a major championship, I feel like Brennan Steele has a very similar skill set to what Keegan Bradley does. He does play these long par threes really well too. That I, I think that he's straight enough off the tee. He's good enough with his irons. You always have to be, you know, concerned about his chipping and putting. But if he can just hit a bunch of greens and regulation, which could be in the cards for him, I wouldn't hate that. He's only $6,500. That's the nice thing about the PGA Championship, because you have these like 20 duds who aren't making the cut, the PGA of America club pros or whoever they are. Uh, but then you get like real players down here, like Tom Lewis is only $6,400. Ben Ann, if this turns into like a scramble fest and it's super difficult, no, no, I will not let myself get sucked into Ben Ann. I won't do it. I'll probably end up doing it, but I'm going to try not to do it to the best of my capabilities. I, I, I should probably play Tom Lewis and said, oh, Smooja got into the field. He's $6,400. All right. Party Marty Laird, good on the coast, good in the wind. So you have to check the weather report with him. He's 6,300. Hadwin's down here at 6,300. Any one of no, Denny McCarthy is 62. Adam Long is 62. Peter Malnati is 62. And now we're into like, absolute jabronis and jim herman who's sixty one hundred dollars where are the other beam bima rich beam sixty one hundred john daly the even six thousand so i don't see anyone below sixty two that you would probably i mean you probably don't want to go to sit down to sixty two anyway but unlike other tournaments you have guys like varner is sixty six munoz is sixty six i don't know who the overwhelming chalk is going to be see Wu really sticks out to me right now so let's try to build the best plays lineup from the initial look that we have going on I would assume Palmer, Palmer, and a lot of it's really going to depend on the Byron Nelson. So I'm going to throw what the results of the Byron Nelson out because they haven't happened at the time of this recording and just assume that everyone just remains neutral from where they're at right now. Ryan Palmer will be popular at $6,900. See, woo, Kim is going to be popular at $7,200. Those are probably, be, at least in my mind, the guys that jump out to me right away that are likely to be the ones that people populate their lineups with on the outset. Cameron Davis as well. So we go Palmer, C. Woo, and Cam Davis, 69, 69, and 7200 dollars That leaves us with $9,600 remaining. I mean, if we play the good plays lineup, I mean, you're going to want to have to jam Rory in here. I, I doubt that that's what I'll end up doing at this event, but I'll do that. I'll jam in Rory and I'll go to Burger because I thought that Burger was a really nice price at $8,700. That leaves us with $8,800, which means you have Zalatoris, Finau. You know what? Paul Casey is definitely a play here. So Paul Casey was a really nice price at $7,700. So if we're calling this the play the best plays lineup, it does seem like value wise, Paul Casey is going to be really good. So at least with $1,100 left, let's take Ryan Palmer out of that lineup. That gives us $8,000 left to play with. Louis should be popular. Scott should be popular. Answer. Leishman. I mean, do you just go with Corey Connors? He's made 16 of 19 cuts. He's coming off to some great performances. I don't see anyone else who kind of sticks out as an absolute value from anyone in this range. What if we can get up a few more dollars? You got Fleetwood, Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick, with his skill set, I think that he actually could be somewhat sneaky at this course. Although, man, again, if he goes out and has a good Byron Nelson, then all of a sudden all bets are off. Day 77, Neiman 78. I mean, Neiman's perfect on the air. He currently has the longest made cut stretch of any player on the PGA Tour. So he's someone that I can see playing well here. The, the, the problem is the around the green game is so killer for him. Let's just call it, do we call it Louie, Hatton, Scott? People love playing these guys. Hmm. I guess if you drop down to like Bryson or even Spieth, off of Rory, all of a sudden your team can be pretty good. So let's get rid of Rory for a moment. <laughs> in the play of the best plays lineup, try to play the balance plays lineup. That gives us $9,700. That means we could have, 
Oh, that doesn't quite work that we could have Spieth and Xander, but I'll take Xander out. Decent Xander, of course. You go Xander. I'm going to go from Siwoo back down to Palmer. Does that give us enough? There we go. There's the popular plays lineup. So Xander, Spieth, Berger as the top three. Paul Casey at 77. Ryan Palmer, Cameron Davis at $6,900. That is what I am calling the play the best plays lineup. And we'll see how close the best play, play the best plays lineup matches up when I do it with Ben. And then I do it once again during the live chat on Wednesday and see how much that fluctuates over a week's time of who I perceive to be the good plays, or at least it's not really who I think are the good plays. It's who I can identify as a good value per DraftKings price. And I would expect to be rather popular when all things come down to it. Anyway, those are my initial reactions to the PGA Championship DraftKings pricing. Remember to sub to the channel, all that jazz. Check out the PGA Championship content, all the new football content that's going up, plus UFC pay-per-view this weekend to become a member at fantasynational.com slash mail right now to get 20% off. You're going to want to do that because there's a major championship and there's millions of dollars up for grabs. I'm going to have some giveaways too, so do all that. Leave a five-star review on the audio. Thank you. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Pat Mayo Experience! Experience!